All right, Madam President, members of the right. guests, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being here. Just a couple uh, things I want to share. So, our, so as I shared, our library is done. It was a big moment today. Um, we had our first group of kids use it. It was kindergarten. It was and um, yeah, as you can see, um, it's kind of it's kind of hard to take good kinda, photos kinda inside of it because of the work it is. But uh, you kind of see the seating inside, and uh, here they are, uh, here they are. Uh, getting ready to go in, which is really cool. And they looked at reefs today, so uh, we can kind of see them coming in, and then here they are. <laughs> it was really really cute so i just wanted to share that that it was great to see them uh get to use it for the first time they followed all the directions uh, appropriately uh they didn't touch anything they weren't supposed to touch uh which there's a lot of things in there that they could um, but it was really cool to finally see like an idea come to fruition and um we have multiple classes viewing that reef video right now. And our next step will be is we're gonna start opening it at night for people in the community to come and use as well and uh, be able to see some of these cool things, maybe something you can do on a, on a weekend night uh, in Fountain Hill. So we're, we're really excited about that. Um, the other thing I just wanted to share was that we had our staff picnic uh, right before the break and I was really excited about how that went down. And we had a lot of fun and we, we did a little bit of um, team building there as far as uh, our volleyball games that we do. And it gives, it gives everyone a chance to just interconnect. One of the first things I got when I, when I arrived uh, two years ago was some of the staff said they didn't know anybody at the other schools. And being a small district, they should really have opportunities to do that. And so uh, the staff picnic is, is a great way to do that. So I wanna thank our sponsors especially our, our Rotary and Kiwanis, who both were really big as far as that, and our PTO providing all the shirts. Um, am I missing any other sponsors? I think I got them all. And this is our winning team for the volleyball tournament. Imagine that. Uh, it's all of our volleyball coaches, so it's kind of unfair. Uh, my district team fell apart, so it was uh, Chris can play, and so it was me and Jared and George from the time. So George, you're what? George is in the back. Still recovering, uh, but we took four, so we were really excited. So uh, thank you to the board for allowing us to do that and making that happen. It's become a really good tradition, and it was a lot of fun. So with that, I conclude my comments. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, I can't yet. There's some books that are going to be on display. I always forget that. Uh, so one of them is Robinson Caruso. So that is available for at the district office to come preview. And then there is a list from Garnet Pennington. She's our librarian at the uh, elementary school. These are books that she's uh, proposing to purchase. Uh, as many of you know, all of our books that we put out on display go through a literary committee that uh, takes a look at the books, make sure it's in the right level, the right lexile level, things of that nature. And then they make the recommendation for it to go to uh, display. And then for display, it goes to the board for final approval. So those books will be uh, available and on display at the district office starting tomorrow. Okay. Has that list been emailed to us? It, it has not because they have not been on display, but I will send that to you. 
Are there any other questions for Dr. J? Okay, hearing none, we're going to move on to district celebrations starting with McDowell Mountain slash Little Falcons Preschool. Good evening, Madam President and board members. Um, I'm excited. I have two um, Falcons. I'm going to start with the staff member. The first, um, Lavona Montgomery has been a great addition to our district. She is kind, friendly, knowledgeable, and hardworking. As a school psychologist for preschool through grade five, Lavona is extremely professional when ex explaining assessment results or sensitive information to families, or when working with staff and students. She is a favorite amongst the staff, and we are lucky to have her here. Congratulations, Lavona. Mr. Wilkinson and I appreciate your commitment to the preschool and elementary school and all the support you provide to our students and families. Congratulations. Smile for the paper. <laughs> Grace Beard. Grace Beard has been an absolute delight since joining the Threes classroom. In a very short time, the staff has seen amazing growth in Grace. She exhibits the traits of a fantastic falcon kindness, respect, and responsibility. Every day, Grace comes to school ready to learn and brightens up her classroom. Congratulations, Grace. We are so proud of you. is Dr. Will Dreyer with Fountain Hills Middle School. <laughs> okay, hello everyone, good evening. So, this is long time overdue for our one faculty of the month, Falcon, Mrs. Michelle Smelt. I only look good as a principal because of her. I'm just gonna start with that. Michelle has been awarded for her exceptional qualities that make her the indispensable go-to person in our school. She is recognized as the glue that binds everyone together. She effortlessly manages multiple responsibilities with grace. And look at that perpetual smile. <laughs> Michelle is celebrated for her unwavering commitment to ensuring the smooth operation of our school going above and beyond in task, tasks outside her designated role. Her ability to juggle numerous responsibilities from coordinating coverage to managing supplies, organizing field trips, showcases her dedication to the well-being of both students, staff, and families. Michelle has established strong relationships with the students, the families, earning her a reputation as a reliable and caring figure in our school. As a coordinator extraordinaire, she sets the highest expectations for our school, contributing significantly to the overall shine of our school. Michelle's award is a testament to her outstanding contributions and commitment to making our school a thriving and harmonious environment. We appreciate you and love you, Michelle. Michelle, how long have you been with the district? Um, 13 years, I think. So she's been like doing that a long time. time. <laughs> I know. Thank you. <laughs> 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 she's so funny. I go, and now you get to write it. No, I'll write it. Thank you so much. That was really kind. 
All right, for my student, this is Daniela Waddell. She is well deserving of this award. Daniela consistently impresses both her teachers and the middle school administration with her sense of responsibility and always finding ways to find me, approach me, find things to talk about. And I absolutely love it when kids go out of their way to say, hey, Dr. W. <laughs> See me? Yes, I see you. She is a model student, always taking responsibility for her action. She strives in the classroom and achieves. We recently celebrated her for her 4.0 GPA and achieving the rank of principal's list. There is no doubt she will continue to excel in her academic and personal endeavors. As always, smiling and demonstrating the Falcon way. Come on down. Mr. Hartman with the Fountain Hills High School. Yeah, it's not bigger though. Yeah, that's fine. Not yet. Okay. No. So, yeah. Great. Thanks. Good evening, everybody. Our first uh, award is faculty. Um, I first got hired uh, three summers ago. Um, it was about eight positions to fill. One of them was security, and we were approaching first day of school, and one of our teachers uh, came in and said, uh, my neighbor um, loves kids, um, he loves to work, and he can't make a lot of money because he's got a, a pension coming in. <laughs> And I was like, I don't even need to interview him because those are actually the three qualifications for this role. Um, and the rest is history. So um, I don't know. I, I imagine walking around campus um, with, you know, Elvis or another celebrity was was similar to this. Um, this person is just an indispensable asset. He has a lot of knowledge due to 30 years in law enforcement, a um, ton of experience. Student and staff um, know that he can handle any situation and keep us safe. Moreover, his compassion for both students and staff shines through as he goes above and beyond to ensure everyone feels supported and cared for. His kindness and support make our school a better place. Additionally, he has a remarkable ability to connect with students who might be hesitant to engage with other adults on campus. He is very deserving for Falcon of the Month, of Falcon of the Month, and we are proud to say he is part of our Falcon family, Craig Morowski. and go right to the gym. Um, our student is not here yet. He is working, uh, maybe a little late, and hopefully we can acknowledge him uh, when he gets here. But um, I'd like to, to let's, share. Let's hold off on reading, because I would rather do it when he is here. OK, it's and not a guarantee right. that he'll be here. So. Uh, OK, well, you let's wait me. a little while. OK, sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> We'll come back to you. Thank you. Uh, next up is the district office transportation staff. Uh, 
Dr. Jay, good evening. Madam President, the rest of the government board, thanks for this opportunity to present the uh, Falcon of the Month Award for somebody who works in the Transportation Department. Uh, when the idea first came up of hiring this person, I was all in. Uh, he has all the endorsements you can imagine, um, and he was very willing to get a school bus and a passenger endorsement, which he passed with flying colors his first attempt. Um, he's been nothing but an asset. Uh, he's driven probably in every state in the United, in the continental United States and probably a few in, in Canada as well, and is 35 plus years uh, in, a, uh, in a commercial uh, truck. So uh, he, kind of, he came with great experience. Uh, the one thing that he said when I interviewed him was this was his retirement job and he was expecting just to have a regular daily route and work the six, six and a half hours a day. And I, I think I said to him that, yeah, we could make that work. In the interim, he's taken on building re relocation. Uh, he's done sports trips. He's done field trips. And he certainly worked, uh, I, I think, more than he anticipated. I know he enjoys his job. He considers it, it, the most important cargo he's ever carried are the students that he carries. Um, on a personal note, uh, when he sees that I am uh, scheduled to drive and, and so forth, he has uh, stepped up and volunteered to take my spot, which is greatly appreciated. He's also uh, done that in lieu of taking family trips and doing other family things. So um, it is my uh, honor and my pleasure to award Jerry Kaiser the uh, Falcon of the Month Award this year. And by the way, uh, I was concerned about him uh, looking like he was being held in a hostage uh, video, so it was nice <laughs> to see him smile. Uh, thanks for everything that you guys do. Thank you. Okay, next up we're going to do some sports recognition. Uh, we're going to start with winter sports uh, wrestling. Coach Salzman couldn't be here tonight, so, uh, but he did write up um, something he asked that I would read. The wrestling team had another great season this year. <clears throat> Led by six seniors, they stayed disciplined and pushed each other throughout the three and a half month season. They saw a lot of success both individually and as a team and qualified five wrestlers to the state tournament. Tyler Trapani had a breakout season this year as a sophomore with 37 wins and qualifying for state at 126 pounds. Tyler Flynn ended his senior year with state runner-up finish, being a three-time state placer, all-time wins and a season leader at Fountain Hills with a 55-3 and three record and second all-time for wins with 154 career wins. Lucas Phillips, a four-year varsity wrestler, came back from a potential season-ending shoulder injury to qualify for the state tournament and nearly placing at 157. Ty Langer placed fourth at state this year at 175 pounds and finishes his excellent four-year career with 132 wins. Nate Barnard came into this season as a first-year wrestler, but with his Barnard sports brain and being a great natural athlete, he was able to pick up the sport quickly and find success, taking second at sectionals and nearly placing at state. Please give it up for these guys. Thank you. 
Good job, guys. Next up is girls basketball. Come on up. Here? Did she leave you anything? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, actually, no. Okay, I can speak on this. Great. I uh, I was fortunate to watch a, a lot of the games this year. Um, the girls had an amazing season. Uh, we had the uh, Region Player of the Year, Alicia. If you want to wave real quick, that's a big deal. <laughs> Girls had a, a wonderful season um, coming in with uh, some new players, some younger players. They have uh, a good mix of, of different grade levels. They uh, were able to qualify for the state tournament. Uh, they won their first round game at home, which was an amazing win, and got to see that court side helping with the, with the clock. So uh, it was great to watch. They went up to Prescott, uh, played Chilo up there, yeah, you know, it was a tough game, but they, they represented Fountain Hills well. They have uh, a lot of younger players that are going to be returning. Um, and over the last couple of years, I know that Coach Baca has been very pleased with the, uh, with the growth of the program. Also, Coach Baca was the coach of the year, so we give it up for her as well. And she also, she also clips 200 wins in her career, which is very, very challenging to do. Uh, so we're very proud of, of where the girls have, have come. Uh, like I said, they're a lot of fun to watch. They're, they, they play fast. They get up and down. They like to shoot the three ball, which is fun to watch. And I just will say to the rest of the state that the, the Falcons are, are going to be back next year, and they're going to be looking to, to build upon the success of this year. So great job, girls. One other thing, real quick, girls. It, raise your hand if you play multiple sports. If you play multiple sports for Fountain Hills. See, I love that. Good job. Thank you. I have three extra. Yeah, I'll just. You want these three back? Yeah. Did, did Hunter, yeah, I got, I got, I got some. Yeah, I got, I got some. Okay, this, okay. You want to say something? No, you, okay. you got some. Oh, the center has got it. Next up, we have boys basketball. Are they here? They are. Oh, come on up. gentlemen. Coach Bonner couldn't be here tonight, um, but he gave me uh, something to read about, about uh, this team. This year's team was a great reminder that sometimes you work hard and you fall short of your goals. We set out this year with expectations that were to be measured by just wins and losses. 
But I feel this group of guys learned a lot more in the ways of communicating and building the right relationships with each other. As the coach of Fountain Hills High School boys basketball, I'm proud of you guys. Thanks for coming in and working hard every day and figuring out how to build relationships with each other. Congratulations on completing a season and getting to compete in the playoffs, which some teams never experience. I can't thank you enough for being the leaders you are, and you will continue to be, not only here at Fountain Hills High School, but wherever you choose to lead in the future. And some individual recognition, Keaton Ort, Region Offensive Player of the Year. Also for Keaton, First Team All Region and First Team All State. Matthew Haney, First Team All Region. Second Team All-Region, and Sam Barnard and Lucas Greco, All-Region Honorable Mention. Mr. Hartman, apparently Mario does not get off until 7, so we'll let you go ahead and read about Mario, because I doubt we'll be able to be here. Great. We'll let basketball finish up first. Worked really hard this evening. What? I've worked really hard this evening. You still don't have Falcon Blue on, though. I'm going to start penalizing you. <laughs> you are the leader of that school. I wear a lot of Falcon Blue. Just not here? <laughs> All right, good job, guys. Did all the basketball guys get coins? I'll meet you at the door. Okay, thank you, uh, President Reed. We are going to go ahead and acknowledge our student. Um, he does work until 7, and we're not sure if he's going to make it. So, There's a quote by Frank Ocean that says, Work hard in silence and let your success make the noise. This quote is the essence of Mario Cavoca's time here at Fountain Hills High School. Mario did not settle. He strived to do better. He utilized his support. He worked ahead and was able to graduate early. He never complained and he overcame adversity with actions of achievement. There were times when high school was uncomfortable, but Mario stood his ground and pushed on. His senior presentation showed his skills of perseverance and his kindness to serve others. Though Mario is considered the student falcon of the month, he has displayed the falcon way throughout his four years here. Congratulations, Mario. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have the VFW Teachers of the Year. 
How are you doing, Madam President? In lieu of me being my back to these folks, would you mind if I stood around the other sure. side and turn yeah. the microphone? Okay. Yep, just make sure you speak in the microphone because the people online would love to hear you. Okay. <laughs> All right, evening. My name is Bill Lazinski. I'm the commander of the Fountain Hills Post 7507. Thank you for allowing us to be present. These awards are for two outstanding teachers. Each year, the Veterans of Foreign Wars select the Middle and High School Education Teachers of the Year. Working with the superintendent and principals was our post field point of contact, Patrick Arman, who dedicated many hours working at the school with everybody to find these two outstanding individuals. Uh, if I may have the two other teachers, I think uh, Allison, I think you're here, and Chris, you're here too? Yeah. Start off with the high school. For the high school is Allison Elm, who has been with the school since July of 2022. Miss McComb has been the teacher for 28 years. Should I whisper that? Or <laughs> <laughs> you've been a teacher for 28 years. Okay, currently, she is the secondary teacher for algebra one and geometry. I had to wonder what a secondary teacher was. I had to Google that to figure out what that meant. So I understand that. Ms. Cohn is the point of contact for the Fountain Hills High School for the students who want to pursue the career in the armed forces, and we really appreciate that. Thank you very much. For our middle school, on my left here is Mr. Chris Peterson. Mr. Peterson has been a social studies teacher of the Fountain Hills Middle School for 18 years. His students learn about social studies and of the arts. He is dedicated, motivated teacher of the arts. Mr. Peterson also spearheads the BFW Patriot Spend Contest, and three of his students were recognized earlier this year by our post. With that, I have our appreciation and a gift card for Allison, that, and for Chris, same thing, I want you to take the gift card and our certificate. Uh, we, we appreciate you very much. Thank you Continue what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not on the agenda is, I apologize, is one additional item. And uh, for this item, I'm going to ask Rich Harrington of our post to do the honor. Mr. King, would you please come down, please? Well, hello, I'm uh, Richard Harrington. I'm a life member of Post 7507. I'd like to thank you all very much for inviting us here tonight. Thank you. I'm here because twice a year, Town hosts this incredible festival, uh, Arts Festival, and they specifically invite the Chamber of Commerce, our post, to run a family friendly picnic style beer garden. And through this, we raise thousands and thousands of dollars, which we then donate to, to different charitable organizations that help veterans. For instance, Manor House downtown that keeps homeless veterans off the streets, Dogs for Vets that gets veterans comfort dogs, and you've all heard of Honor Flight where we send veterans to Washington, D.C. at no cost to them. And it takes a lot of work. It takes 800 to 1,000 hours. We go and we set up. We operate for three, day, three days and we tear down. And this year, we're very blessed to have Patrick Garman and Kim Garman help organize some very wonderful young gentlemen from the Fountain Hills High School, three of them from the wrestling team. I'd like to thank Kyle Jagodinsky, that's right. <laughs> They're awesome. They're awesome. I'd also like to thank Andrew Nucci and Xander uh, Hewitt. Okay. Additionally, uh, we had uh, Aiden Meekum and we had River George help us. Five wonderful young gentlemen. 
So thank you so much. So tell you how much muscle they brought. These five gentlemen help mostly older veterans move 17 40-pound tents over 100 tables, over 300 chairs, over 1,600 pounds of sandbags. And we put all that and we moved it to, to two 30-foot moving trucks. And then they helped us unload it. So we want to thank them very much. Uh, and the bigger picture is they only, not only helped us, but perhaps tonight to their help, to the generosity, to the funds that we raise, that tonight there's a homeless veteran sleeping safe at Manor House with some food in his stomach tonight. And that's the bigger picture of how these young gentlemen helped. So, thank you so much. In addition, as part of our thanks, I'd like to present to the Fountain Hills Booster Club a check for $250 as part of our thanks to help with our committees. Call to the public. This is the time for the public to comment. Time limits may be allocated on public comment at the discretion of the board president for the board to efficiently complete its business. The board reserves the right to prohibit any comments made in a discourteous or threatening manner. Complaints about specific individuals, students, or personnel are discouraged. Personnel issues should be directed to the appropriate staff member or administrator per district policy. Members of the board may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on the agenda. Therefore, pursuant to ARS 38-431.01H, action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, responding to any criticism, or scheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date. It's the custom of the board that we allow three minutes. Uh, Renee Johnson. Can I just turn it? Yes, please do. <laughs> I qualified. <laughs> Madam President, board, and guests, I'm Renee Johnson, the parent and resident in Fountain Hills. My family is asking the board to allow ESA home educated students to participate in district athletics and activities. Tonight's a busy meeting, so this issue is not on the agenda, but I'm wondering why it isn't listed for future action or discussion. Did the board vote on it? Is that why it's gone? Or does there have to be a motion every time for it to be discussed? I don't understand this process. Anyway, at our last meeting, there was a question about whether ESA students can be homeschooled. I hope you had an opportunity to look over materials that I provided for you. You have the parent handbook for the ESA program. It says that ESA recipients may use funds for home education. So that answers the question, yes, ESA students can be home educated. Another thing that came up at our last meeting was the email that Dr. Jay shared from the lawyer, Dr. P or David Palou. Mr. Palou gave you incorrect information. He's wrong when he says that ASR 152402 says that all students receiving an ESA should be filing an affidavit with the county school superintendent identifying as attending a private school. Mr. Palou doesn't understand that ESA students under, are under the authority of the Arizona Department of Education. Um, they don't report anything to the county and they're certainly not private school students if they're home educating. So you have the, the ESA parent handbook which also says that um, AR 1524 to requires that a parent of a qualified student not file an affidavit of intent to homeschool. That means that the ESA contract is the affidavit, the proof that the student is receiving an education is required by Arizona law. So ESA students are under the authority of the State Department of Education, not the county. So we're back to the question, why can't ESA homeschool students participate? You have the athletic um, handbook from the district. It says that students registered with Maricopa County as homeschool students may participate in extracurricular activities. So that would be non-voucher homeschoolers can participate. But I also gave you the Gilbert and Mesa athletic handbooks that say that um, they're just a little bit different. They say that students registered with the State Department of Education may participate. That means home-educated ESA students. 
So why don't we change the words in our district? That's just a couple of words. Why would you say no? So not allowing ESA home educated students to participate raises a lot of questions. Did you know that if Jake came from a different country as a foreign exchange student, he would be welcome to participate in district sports? Um, but coming from our town, living here, paying taxes here, he cannot. Why is that? And another question um, was, why was he allowed to run in middle school but not allowed to run in high school? So could it be because of, it can't be because of the AIA rules because ESA home educated students are included in many other high schools and they follow the AIA rules. So what if an, also, what if an ESA student wants to be in band or in a club? Will that be allowed? Um, you have a copy of the Arizona Department of Education Quarter 1 ESA report. It says that in the 85268 zip code, currently 120 students in, are enrolled in the ESA student from our zip code. 20 of those kids left the Fountain Hills School District to join the ESA program. That's 120 kids who will be turned away if you don't let them participate. Why not allow them to contribute? That 20 more, the 20 kids might return to the district for their education. We don't know. So again, we ask you, please allow ESA home-educated home students to participate in district athletics and activities. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll answer your question. Oh, um, it's not on the agenda because we're still researching. Uh, it is a policy in our district, so it's not just changing a couple words, that it actually has to be vetted. Uh, so we're reaching out to the Department of Education, to the county superintendent's office, and to other attorneys to c gather information. So it isn't anything that's going to be decided in the next month. Um, it will eventually come back to the, um, to the agenda, uh, maybe later in the school year, um, but it, it, it does have to be vetted because it, it is a policy, so it's not just changing the words. Okay, that makes sense. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, next up are action items. Uh, the first is the personnel action. You have that in your packet. Are there any questions or comments regarding the personnel action? Um, I have some. I um, well, I will be making a motion to table the position pay change for the executive director of finance since that has not been approved. Um, I I think we should wait on that one, um, and then I will most likely be a no vote anyway because I I know we have to separate um, positions from the people. Uh, and so I am okay with us cutting the assistant principal at the high school as far as the position. Um, but I am surprised that we didn't look at maybe re finding something for Jessica King as I do every interaction I've had with her. She is very on top of things. And so I was a little surprised to see um, a change not happening maybe there um, instead of getting rid of a, a, a principal altogether. Um, so I am sad to see that as a that person not being moved around. Can you clarify on the executive director position? I didn't hear you. Um, I just, uh, since the reorganization has not been approved, I'm uncomfortable approving the position and pay change. Um, so I would officially move to table or to remove that from this action or this uh, personnel report. Just since the, the reorganization hasn't changed, I don't understand why we would be approving the pay change before the reorganization and the actual position has been created. Okay. The director of finance, though, is a position that does exist. It's, it's additional, additional uh, pieces to that are overseeing three departments that Chris Alexander has recently oversaw, and with him not returning, has to fall on to somebody so that that just I, that's yes I understand I understand that but that's I mean that's another one of my concerns especially if we ha can't or we need to separate people from positions this is one where the position in order to respect the serious and important nature of the finance position especially for our district in this current atmosphere I will be a no vote unless that person has significant financial background okay. Are there any other questions or comments regarding the personnel report? Can I officially move to have that um, that separated from this personnel? You can motion. Action? Yeah, so moved. Is there a second on that? Hearing no second, the motion does not carry. 
Is there a motion to approve the personnel report as presented? I move we accept the um, personnel report as written on here. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay, that's three to one, Krista. Next up is the Fountain Hills Middle School Supplemental Reading Book, Unbroken. Yeah, Madam President, members, board and guests, this is, um, again, a supplemental reading book, Unbroken, that went through the uh, uh, Literary Committee. It is one that has been on display, and as far as I'm aware, there's been no concerns with it that have come to me, positive feedback. So it comes to you now for... Are there any questions or comments regarding Unbroken? I'm just going to, again, Absolutely. oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm just going to, again, thank you for all of the steps that were taken to get this in front of parents, because that's been one of my requests, so I really appreciate that. So I'll just add that I had never read this book before, but I actually read it this weekend, and it's, it's an amazing book. It has a historical perspective of World War II. Uh, it's a good lesson about overcoming adversity. I mean, it's a wonderful book, and I totally agree that it should be available for questions. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Okay. Hearing none, I move that we approve the supplemental reading book for the middle school, Unbroken. I second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is the job description of the IT coordinator. Yes, Madam President, members, board and guests. In an effort to continue to build um, with the resources that we have and again to our partnership with the Fruth Group, we feel that um, moving to a coordinator position is not yet, it's not the level of a director position um, and that's where the, the Fruth Group kind of comes in is overseeing those big picture things, uh, servers, SIPA compliance, cybersecurity. But having a IT coordinator who is responsible to the staff and to the students, uh, that is uh, someone on, on hand on a daily basis that can deal with lower level issues and, and make themselves available to the staff as needed, we believe is the right path moving forward in a small district of our size. So we've put together uh, this job description and um, qualifications and requirements, and I'm here to answer any questions that you have as, as well as Kaylee. Are there questions or comments regarding the IT coordinator? Okay, hearing none, do I have a motion? I'll move that we approve the IT coordinator job description. I second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is the issuance of professional contracts. Yes, tonight we have uh, professional contracts available. Ms. Brown is here to answer any questions that you may have. It's that time of year already. It's, it's gone really fast. And uh, tonight it would be our uh, professional contracts followed by support staff and then coaching agreements. So those three tonight. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments regarding the professional contracts? These are for continuing teachers. And they have how many days to respond? Is it business days? No, calendar days. Yeah. And you are provided a copy of the contract. Are there any questions? Okay. Hearing none, I move that we approve the issuance of the 24-25 professional contracts. I second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. And any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is the issuance of the work su uh, support staff work agreement. Dr. J. Yep, Madam President, members of board and guests, these are our uh, support staff agreements. Uh, been some changes to those, but overall, um, the agreements are presented to you for approval, and um, I do recommend that. Are there any questions or comments regarding the support staff work agreement? Okay. Hearing none, I'll move that we issue, that we approve to issue the 24-25 support staff work agreements. I, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is the issuance of the 24-25 coach agreement. Dr. Jane? Yes. Uh, one of the things I love about what we do here is, is having something like this for coaches. As a former coach, a lot of times there's the uncertainty of 
finishing a season and going into the following year. And so giving something to our coaches um, that, that is uh, in writing like this, I think is very good. So with that, I'm, I'm here to answer any questions, Jim. Okay, I have a question. So typically, uh, since coaches are at will, I understand the, the coaching agreement, but they come to us like right prior to the season normally. So with this, are you saying that coaches from this year are going to be asked to sign this for next year? No. No, we review coaches every year. They have to go through the process again. Okay, so when is somebody, like for a coach, I'll just use baseball for example. Baseball's currently in its season right now. Mm -hmm. When is the baseball coach going to be asked to sign this? Um, before they start, I have them signed. So before next year. So next year for whoever's starting will be doing it whenever they apply and get the position. Okay. And those names will still come back to the board because at this time those yeah, names so are unknown. after board approval, but right? Before they start. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So really, like before they start, it'll they're going to sign this and come to the board. But but they do have access to see the document and sure. and, and see it up front of what's expected. Right. I just wanted to make sure yes, and clarify. Yes, we are all on board. 100%. So, okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions regarding the coaching agreement? Okay, hearing none, do I have a motion? I move the, uh, accept, the accept the coaching agreement. I second. I have a motion and a second to issue the coaching agreements. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next up is the 24-25 work calendar. Uh, the calendars are different depending on what contract an employee is on. Uh, we have a nine month uh, calendar, a teacher calendar, an 11 month employee calendar, and a 12 month employee calendar. Dr. J, do you have any other information you'd like to? No, they're, they're similar to last year's. I can say that the work we did last year has been felt very positively throughout the district. And I do believe that these are the, the additional things that we offer that I do believe retain staff and will, will um, attract staff to the district when they have uh, innovative calendars, innovative work calendars. Um, these are things that are, are, are very positive with our staff. Okay. Are there any questions regarding the work calendars? No, but I want to thank Jill for catching the, uh, the half day before oh. the vacations. So that was mm -hmm. a good thing to put in. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, do I have a motion? I move we, I move we approve the 2024-2025 work calendar. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries for nothing. Uh, next up is the information discussion items. The first one is a supplemental reading book, Tuesdays with Maury. Dr. Jake? The Literary Committee is, is moving forward with, with the book. Um, I do not have... I don't think I see any representatives here tonight, but we will take any questions back and, and, and email you back with any, any questions that you have. So the only, only emails we received were in support. That's great. And thank you again for all of the work that you did to get that in front of parents. Yep. This is a fabulous book. I read it quite a while ago, but it's just incredible. Yeah, I'm really happy with the group of what we're doing. Um, it's good conversation. Uh, having a, a little bit of additional process in it is, it, 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 again, I just feel like it's, it's not just one person's opinion coming forward. It's a group effort. And then from there, it's also a group effort up here that you guys get to, to decide. So a um, lot, of, lot of eyes on, on books. So. Thank you. So if there's, any other, if there's any questions, please reach out to Krista or Dr. Jane. Uh, next up is the organizational chart. We talked about this last time. Uh, we brought it back for discussion again, and then uh, it will be on the next agenda for an approval. Dr. J, do you want to go over it? Yeah, just, I wanted to share that I did take feedback um, for the last two weeks, uh, just a few steps that I've taken since the, the last meeting. Prior to the meeting, I did meet with both staffs of the middle school and high school uh, to initially take feedback and then um, I opened as always my, my doors always open to staff uh, I gave them they already didn't have it my number to call me uh, I had a, a couple of people reach out and it was great to see that they took the time to give feedback it was 
um, very constructive and positive, and they just want what's best for their schools, and I, I value that, and that's why I did it that way. I wrote a letter to the entire uh, middle school and high school community the Friday before break uh, to give them uh, some time to ponder over the break, and again, made myself available. I, I only received a couple of responses, but again, it was mostly just thank you for you know sharing the information with us and and um, you know some concerns with uh, with some change and then some support of we understand it's not ideal but the district has to make some tough decisions. Uh, finally, on the work day, which I just want to share, I love uh, it's great. I had nothing on my calendar that day, which was awesome, and I spent the whole day with teachers, so it was really nice. I started at the high school, I went to every room uh, there and uh, was able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with every teacher that I could find. Took a lot of feedback from there, and then I was able to get over to uh, the elementary school and spend time with all of them as well. So it was a very productive day. And um, you know what I've, what I've shared back is that we are still in the process of deciding which way to go. Um, there is some concern with having too much cuts at the high school, going from three to uh, one and a half. Uh, there is um, some people that are uh, supportive of the fact that they do think that administration has to be reduced uh, some. Uh, we do have uh, some budget issues we're gonna have to address. I think that the budget cuts that we are proposing um, goes a little, probably more than we need to go right away, but there's uncertainties that pop up. Uh, for example, if, if we end up having a traditional model of a principal at each school, that's going to eat right back into that budget cut number that we've presented to you. Uh, I know there will be a teacher or some position that will pop up that needs to be filled. So that's why we kind of start going a little farther than we need to. Uh, and we might also be receiving some additional funding uh, with the high school uh, enrollment being below 400. I believe there is a another weighted category that we're going to be able to qualify for next year. Uh, what that exact number Tyler's working on, and we'll get get it to us uh, soon. Um, so that, that's kind of where we're at at this at this time. I, I've taken a lot of feedback. My my goal is to bring um, final recommendation at the next board meeting on the third, which would come with the contracts for those people. Uh, so I'm open to have any discussion that you have or any questions that you have at this time. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> as we talked about, um, I'm not an ad I have full faith in you, in you, Dr. W., but I'm not an advocate of having a split principal between the high school and the middle school. So I would like to see a full-time principal at the high school and a full-time principal at the middle school, um, and also at the elementary school, each with either a dean of students or, um, well, it'll be a dean of students. Um, I do like the idea of just having one registrar. I know that's not part of the organizational chart, um, but I do like the idea of just having one registrar. I think that we're a small enough district that one person can handle that, uh, and then it, it adds consistency to the registration process. Um, so other than, you know, so I'd like to see the change of having three principals, one at each school, um, and then I would encourage the people that were on the personnel report that their jobs were rift. It's never easy, and as I said last time, it's really, unfortunately, we have to look at positions and not people, and, and that's difficult to do because we are small. But I would like to encourage those people that are interested in working in our district to come back and apply for a different position, that just because your job was rift doesn't mean that we don't want you. It just may be in a different position. So that's my comment. Any other questions or comments? Um, I have some comments. Um, I too uh, would be an advocate for her, um, a principal at each site, although I, I did like that idea of the superintendent covering one of those. I know <laughs> you're probably not interested. Well, you were serious. I was oh, serious. Okay. As soon as you said it, I wrote it down. Um, <laughs> you have a great relationship with staff, students, and families, so I think you would do a lot for to unify there, for sure. I don't think he has any more hours um, in the day. That, that's true. Time is the question. Tamara even has the same conversation. Yeah, Tamara's like, you didn't want to see him, did you, Tamara? <laughs> um, I still have the same concerns over the financial position just because of um, our relationship with the community and their concern over our financial situation. So to me, if we truly separate 
person from position, then we would maybe be making some different decisions here because I do have faith in Chris, the person. However, with this position, I, in order to respect the position, I think there needs to be a financial background there. Um, so that's my, my concern there. Um, and then my other concern is just with, with this change, I, I, remind me because I'm not sure. I know it's been sent to us before, but Dr. J, when does your contract end? I am in year one of three at Okay, this point. so we have two more years with you, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he hopes. So. Okay. Because, yes, for, for something like this, in the end, like I said at the last meeting, it would be us needing to have confidence in you and your decisions because in the end you're their day to day so yeah. you are the one that needs to decide who you think is best for these positions and so for me to to approve something like this i would hope to see more like a three to five year contract to really see this carried out well let me share with you that people that that know my decision making is you you don't make decisions about buildings, about charts, about those things based on, on, on like one person's opinion, right? So what I'm presenting to you is what I think is in the best interest of our small district facing budget cuts, facing building repairs that are coming and those types of things. And so the idea of the whole plan is that we have a surplus at the end of the year, okay? That surplus then can be going into our capital, you know, fund and to do some capital projects. But at the same time, consistency, I've always shared over and over again, turnover kills organizations. And, and so consistency among those, those, those um, positions is important. One of my favorite books of all time in leadership, Good to Great, speaks very heavily on the organization as a bus and getting the right people on the bus. But then beyond that, getting the right people on that bus in the right seat. And so as I enter into year three here, I, I've gotten to know our staff and look at work ethic, look at ability, look at uh, the intangible things. Because when you hire out from the outside, which can be great, um, you also have to be able to attract people to a small town that is a little bit off the track. You know, it's not... A lot of people don't pass through Fountain Hills on their way to, to work. So it is getting someone to commit to this district. And one of the things that has made this district so powerful and strong is if you look at the economic impact the district has on the community, um, the number 118 or so of our 170 employees live in town. They're committed to being here. And through tough times, they've stuck, right? The convenience factor representing the community they live in all those things factor in so the decisions i i've put together in that organizational chart are based on who wants to be here who's committed to being here i know they can't commit forever we all know that but what's going to give us the most streamlined less impactful uh, issues that, that can come up and and i strongly believe with good training and the right mentors that people will be successful, but they have to have the work ethic, the professionalism, and some of those intangible pieces. And so that's why I've selected those people in those roles. I, I definitely agree with you yeah. there that people can be trained. However, with, with this one, I think there is a level of qualification that's almost required. Um, and then, Chris, do you live here in Fountain Hills? No. No. Okay. Um, yeah, that's... A, that's a big one for me is the financial the financial piece because like I said I think there's a lot um, hanging on that and we've been told as board members when asking questions to try and simplify the finances for us how complicated that is and so to me it would make more sense to allocate more funds to a financial director's position and hire someone more qualified than creating a new executive administrative position at a bigger salary. I think that I, and, and I look get at that, like that. But adding that plus adding back in that principal position plus adding in, you know, there's going to be But if I, we got rid of the Chris Alexander position and an assistant principal and instead allocated more funds to the financial director position, 
wouldn't, I mean, you would it's, still have all of your responsibilities it's still, and well, it's not still, an assistant. Yeah, but. I mean, it's still gonna cut into that total number. You know, the original number was 266, so adding in the, the high school principal position is gonna be with salary benefits and everything's gonna bring 120 back into that number. So you're, you know, you're already down now significantly. Um, I, I just, and I, and I do respect and appreciate the concern, I do, because one of the things that has has been really hard for me in the last two years is dealing with those financial concerns that have that were here and i'm very I, I know there's still work to do but the amount of work that we have done and the amount of things that have been cleaned up i'm very proud of the other thing that's really important is the staff that is overseen by the director they're a very tight group they're doing great work um, they were part of the process when I put this organizational chart together. They're excited about Mr. Hartman coming over. They're excited to work under his leadership. And much like we did, again, looking back to one of our best financial people we've had, Dr. Allen, we're doing the same playbook as we did there. Dr. Allen came as an assessment director and principal from Paradise Valley District. He was not a financial guy, but he immersed himself in with... Uh, Tom Elliott, who is a, just a fantastic financial person and former CFO of Paradise Valley. He uh, was with McKeese, you know, uh, Rob got involved with the county, he got involved with anyone that would listen, anyone that would take him on. What I like about our plan here is that over the next four months, um, I'm going to have Mr. Hartman start doing those trainings, start immediately learning from Craig, who is a lifesaver uh, in coming and working for free. Uh, but Craig's gonna be working with him, Tyler's gonna be working with him, our partnership with Vail. A lot of people don't know that our Vail partnership entitles us to other departments other than just curriculum. So we're gonna be sending Mr. Hartman down to Vail to work with their director. He's gonna be going out to other districts to, to, to see it, but what it really comes down to when you look at all the audit findings that are on there, they're all from lack of following directions or lack of following processes. That's all it is. It's someone took a shortcut. Someone ordered something without doing it right. You have to have strong processes and rule following capabilities because I've always said when someone comes up with an emergency, that's not necessarily our problem. Like, again, I want to help them, but I can't bend the rules because you didn't think about it. And so we're, we've really trained our staff that following policy and procedures is so important. And the three that are doing that, and I want to give some real props to Val and Tammy and Christy, they've done a great job of saying to principals, you can't order that. Like, that's not okay. And they meet, we meet regularly, and I take a big part of my time looking at these financial reports. In fact, they all know there's certain numbers that they can't go below. There's certain things that we've said, no, we're not buying, we have to wait on. So I, I do think that I understand the concern, but I really do believe it comes down to that person has to have the humility to ask for help and to ask the tough questions. When we didn't have a finance director, and we brought the fruit group to you a year and a half ago. I called four different people to make sure it was okay. The county, I called our attorney, I called another attorney, and I had Tyler and Jeremy both look at it, and they all signed off that it was good to go because I didn't feel comfortable with it. Now, you learn from that and you move on to the next one. So running an RFP the first time is hard, but then the second time it's easier, the third time it's easier. So. I do feel with the right support and what we can pay, the realities, that's one of our goals. Remember, financial realities. We don't have the financial reality to pay a financial director $150,000 a year. We just don't have that reality to do that. Um, do we have anyone on staff with accounting background or financial background um, that can be a resource to him? Because if he's... Yeah, I mean, our, well, the, the team that he has, I. Right now we have payroll, Christy's in payroll. She's done it a couple of different places. Um, I mean, official training or anything, do we have somebody that's got so, because when I think of even just the review of, 
you know, the finances, there's all the, the coding, and I did medical billing and coding, and that sure. can be very complicated, and I imagine financial is similar. It has to be coded the right way in order for things to be reimbursed, and not only coded the right way for purchases, but from the right funds and all of those things. So that it is pretty complex. Yeah. And it's accuracy. Yes. It's not like... But so do we have someone that can act as the resource? Yes, because it's we have our consultants and we have, obviously, Craig has volunteered even beyond when he's done, because that's what he wanted to do is help the schools. He's, he's going to continue. Uh, Dr. Allen, if you're listening, you're going to get a phone call. Um, <laughs> But you know, we, we just have to surround right we have to surround our people with those minds to teach that because it's not something that can't be learned. It's being accurate, professional, and on top of things. And that's, I wish I had seen that attitude when we were asking questions because we were basically told you'll never understand it. You've been on the board how long and you don't understand it. So it was told to us like there was no well, chance ever <laughs> that we could ever understand educational finance. Which is one of the reasons why I'm extremely concerned. We're looking. It's complicated. At putting someone in there. Can I? Can I have Craig come up and Absolutely. say a few words? Just a second. Yeah. Um, I will say I do understand a lot of it, so that's not actually true. But it is very complicated. But I think with me, the biggest thing is that it. Well, one in your on your question about coding or your comment about coding. Coding changes all the time. So it's staying up with the processes. It's making sure, like, like you said with Dr. Allen, Dr. Allen embedded himself with other finance directors with the state and, and always was asking questions. And that's the biggest thing is it has to be, that person has to be somebody that's constantly learning, constantly asking questions because coding may be this this year and next year they change it to something else. And that's where if, if somebody doesn't stay on top of deadlines and, and understanding the current finances, it's like a tax accountant. Like your taxes change every year. Like this year you can write this off and next year you can't. And so if, if the tax accountant doesn't stay on top of what's legal now and what, what can be done, that's where they end up getting into trouble. The finance director is exactly the same way. Go ahead, Mr. Rodolfi. Madam President, board members, um, I'd like to relate my experience from the town of Fountain Hills. I was the town's finance director for six and a half years. I originally wanted to be the finance director for five years. Um, so I told the town manager that I wanted to leave and they were going to start the recruitment process. It took a year and a half for them to find a replacement for me. Um, and I had lots of contacts, lots of resources for people that they could try. And the finance director they finally <coughs> recruited uh, started with a 25% pay raise over mine and he's now about 50% over mine. So I think you would, to get somebody even at a relatively low level, you're looking at probably $100,000 at least. So. What, are we, what did we currently offer for the financial director position? I think it's right, one, one to 104, somewhere in there. Could you speak to being coming out of town finance and now into school finance, that it's different, but how you're kind of coping with it. It is definitely different. Um, school finances, even though it's considered non-for-profit accounting, um, it's different than governmental accounting. The concepts are all the same. As Dr. J presented, um, the policies and the procedures go a very long way. I don't know how to do something with the accounting system, but the staff does. And I have the expertise to make sure that they're following good internal control, that they're double checking things, and that I have every confidence that they would be able to work with any finance director as long as the finance director is asking questions, um, showing the responsibility, the professionalism that Dr. J mentioned. I think it would work. What kind of, this is kind of a little bit of a switch, what kind of salary are we offering for the executive director of business and support services? 100 to 104. Okay. And we're asking him to take over more than just the finance. It is overseeing three other departments. Um, however, I do feel that transportation runs on its own is a well-oiled machine, I had to say it, but um, <laughs> they do good. Um, the uh, IT department has been very smooth the last year and a half with our partnership. 
So I, I do think that the biggest hurdle there will be um, overseeing maintenance. Um, I will say that Todd Harris has become, like Mr. Rudolphy, a uh, full-time employee at no money. Uh, and Todd has worked really hard to ensure that when John leaves, that we are not left with all these unknowns. He's working pretty much 40 hours a week, most weeks. He's constantly involved. And so hit for free. And his plan is is that he's gonna be working with the new maintenance coordinator, which we'll be doing an interview soon, to get them up to speed. But he's already planning on all these closing out of, of um, you know, some of our contracts with uh, consolidation once tonight happened and with Mr. Harvin being approved, he's gonna be part of all of those financial conversations moving forward over the next four months as we continue to, to get ready. So I feel like my knowledge of, of school finance has gone tremendously up over the last year and a half because I never had to do it as a principal, right? Um, there are things in the weeds that you have to obviously get to know. And, but, but the biggest thing is, is the county always answers their phone. They're always available. They'll come out and spend days with you. Nobody wants to see people get money wrong. That's the key. The problem is where all these people have issues is they don't take help or they try to do too much on their own and they skip processes. And if you look at every one of those, pretty much every single one of those audit findings, it's not money fraudulent, money, it's, it's you know, someone didn't get a quote. Someone didn't bring it to the board at 100,000. Remember the first thing we did is we got rid of all of those, um, that list, that big long list of our 100,000, remember we right. sole source, sole we, we got rid of a lot of that because a lot of that was wrong, no one was going back and looking at it. So it's really about having constant communication, constant meetings and making sure that everything is done correctly the first time and telling people that you may not get your purchase order in and approved in, in a day or two. It may take a week or two for you to hear back from us because we're taking our time to get it right. There's, that's fine. I, I would accept that if we hadn't been saying that the reason our finances were bad were, was because people were new or didn't understand educational finances. Well, Those they weren't were following reasons. the process. Yeah, turnover, because every time you have turnover, there's going to, some people are going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes in our jobs every day. We have things that we, we learn from and we get better from. I guess then what I'm saying is if someone who has some background with financial or at least has financial experience coming into our educational finance is not following the process, how are we going to be confident that someone that is not familiar with finances and the process is going to be I, more I, committed? I, I understand. Them? So the last two finance directors were not finance directors previously. But they had accounting and financial background. One had business accounting. Um, that was uh, Kat. She came from the corporate world, and so she did not have school finance. Um, and then Alicia came I, out of payroll. She what? Came out of payroll. Out of payroll. So. I, re, I only knew Kat from the audience perspective, but and so I didn't have the knowledge that you guys had with her. However, when she did her reports, she sounded very informed. She, it she sounded put them like in she business, knew what she was doing, but yes. But it, it wasn't, she, um, she, she was good when it came to the business aspect of it, but the processes for school finances weren't being followed. And the biggest one was procurement. That the procurement, for businesses, they may not have a procurement, a procurement policy, but the state has a procurement statute for us, and she was not following that. So that was the biggest one, is that it was just, things were getting paid just like you would, would in a corporate world, but that's not how the school finance How works. long was she the finance director? Uh, a couple here. of years, a year. And, and we just, we got to get back to also though, the realities of, who, of hiring, okay? The, the pool of administrators right now, I just read a national article, finding a superintendent right now is very challenging for districts. And the things they're going to, to attract people to those jobs, because there's so few of them, principals. When we did the middle school principal search the first time, it was Patrick and I did that, and we didn't hire any of them. I just, it wasn't, like I have a standard I have to, I have to feel good with. And um, 
and then through connections and researching and putting it putting it out there, I have this position available. We found Dr. Wheeldryer, and and she's done an amazing job. Again, it's it's about, and she hadn't been a principal before. Okay, she had been a director, a dean, national champion coach. A lot of people don't know that, um, but those are things. But but what I saw in her is that go getter the laughter, the, 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 just the, the, she has things that are intangible. Okay. Now I can teach her this, how you do this, or this is how you do that, or this is the expectation, but you have to have people that you, you feel that you can trust to get the work done at a high level. And I can tell you that the last two years I've had to very few times had to go and deal with a middle school middle school issue. She's on top of things. Her and Val are a great team. And so you do that in everything you do, every position you hire for, you're looking for who fits this organization. And so, yes, it would be great to find someone with an MBA and someone with years of experience that wants to work for, you know, $85,000, but that's just not reality, okay? We did, before we hired Alicia, we went through two different rounds of interviews and I wouldn't hire any of them. I didn't hire any. So it wasn't a matter of like, hey, we didn't have applicants. We had applicants, but none of them I felt comfortable could answer questions, could follow those types of things. So it really has become a reality for us in our small community and looking at how many, for example, Dr. Allen's been working all year for Phoenix Elementary District because they couldn't find anybody and they pay a big, big number. They can't find anybody. And so the people that are out there, and it's not just a finance. See, that's the thing. We, we have to find that middle ground because somebody can have a great finance mind, but if they can't communicate with teachers and staff in an educational environment, that's tough because it's a different world. You know, when, when, a, te when a coach comes to Mr. Hartman at the last minute and says, I forgot to do this, and I he's going to have that experience of knowing how that feels to have made a mistake or understanding how that feels to be a coach or and be able to, to work with them to say i can't help you here but here's what we might be able to do for you that personal touch goes a long way and and rob had that you know rob was a principal rob was a teacher so he understood when i came to him with hey we made a mistake here and uh, we need this for graduation and i need it like tomorrow can you do that Yes, maybe I can, maybe I can't, but you respect the decision because you're following the rules. And that's the key is following rules is so important. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate what you said about hiring things that are intangible because I see that too in, in Kim. Yeah. And um, uh, about the, sometimes somebody can't communicate with that comment. Um, that I think is where the team comes in. You know, you, maybe you have someone that's strong with the experience and maybe they're not so good at communicating with the other people, but that's why they have a team and maybe they can delegate, delegate, delegate something like that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was, do, how long is the financial director contract usually? Like, why do we keep in one year? There, is that just, it's always one year? Only admi Every administrator is one year. The only person that gets um, a longer contract is the superintendent. There are no long-term con contracts is, for administration. And is that something that's like regulated? Or I, I, we can, we it's can just certainly... customary throughout the districts. Because it's very interesting, because I think one thing that would help is maybe having a longer contract, someone that intends to stay, you know, through the findings of the audits and things like that, because then they're, you know, they're kind of in it too. It's, it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> yeah. Because sure. if they're not a good fit, you're stuck with that contract. And so that's why well, how confident are we? In that? Well, I, you know I, I agree. He has to be confident <laughs> yeah. in, and this is, I, I said it at the last meeting, while we can look at these faces and, and be like, oh yeah, they're great, maybe they're not great, we don't know. At the end of the day, we're the only, you're the only person that the board employs. And so whoever you put in these positions they answer to you. So all of you employees that are sitting there, just remember your actions are reflective of him and he, that's the only reflection we see. And I have so in Dr. J. I, so I have faith in you as well. And then yeah. um, the other thing is with that salary, my expectation is that it will be sooner rather than later that we do not have our partnership with um, yes. the, the outside professional group Correct. because 
Um, if we're going to pay somebody internally on that salary, I don't want to be paying an outside organization. So you better be a quick learner, Mr. Hartman. Yeah, yeah. we, yes, and I, I, I understand the, the multi-year contract idea. It does build confidence in somebody, and, and that is understandable. Um, but the other piece of this is, is commitment to, to what we do. We, we've been, I've been here for two years, and I've already been through two finance directors. Okay, one quit the first week I was here, and then we, we hired Alicia, and she made it about a year. Okay, so that's a reality in Fountain Hills, unfortunately. Um, if you go back and just look at each site, each school, each position, lot, lots of turnover. And, and the idea is to get some consistency because on that team, when I meet with the finance team, there are certain questions that I ask. So for example, right, all year pretty much, but more, more importantly, second semester, once Alicia told me she was, she was leaving, nothing has been purchased since then without me looking at it. And most of them have been no, okay? Can it wait? Can it wait? Is there another fund? Is there another way to pay for this? In fact, we're cutting off all spending as of Friday. So there's no more spending unless it's an emergency situation for the rest of the year to prevent us from making more mistakes, number one. Number two, as we're transitioning into this new role, Craig's here two days a week, so he's knocking out what he can on those two days. But it's really about, there's not much left we to do. There's a, there's a limit to what I will go below in our capital, and that's set. Everyone in this organization knows that. I will, I'm not going below that number. So there's, there's really nothing left to purchase. We, we've done our improvements. I'm proud of our improvements. Our schools look great. We have some more work to do, uh, but that's it. So now it's getting the M&O correct. We had to reduce some, fun, some force. We're going to um, put some people in some new positions and hope that at the end of the year we have a surplus and hopefully have more kids. That's the hope. Okay, last question. Yeah. Um, is the financial director position open and posted right now since we lost Alicia, or did we not post it? I did not. I went with a internal um, promotion. And so are we not going to post it to even see if that's fillable? You guys approved or? it earlier tonight. It's already done. Yeah, okay. So then, so since we approved the position before the reorganization chart, what happens with the organization charts? Well, the organizational chart still had, we have always had a finance uh, director of finance, so that didn't change. We haven't approved the organizational chart because we're not happy so, with the principal part. Right? So, okay, so then at that time would you could You could put, you know, if you guys want to put maintenance, technology, and transportation on somebody else, um, that, that's your call and that's your opportunity to share that with me. I'm, I'm telling you, we're running out of people, though, to put more work on. Um, I've spoke with Dr. Wheeldryer about not only the dual principal role, but I also talked to her about taking on some of Mr. Alexander's work. And just to, to show you the kind of person she is, the response was, I'll do whatever the organization needs me to do. That, that, that's why we love her right there. Well, okay, we'll stuff need like you to that. stay then, yeah. right? <laughs> but, but, but that, it's been but, recorded, but, it's on tape. But that, <laughs> that's the thing is, I'll say it again. <laughs> she, so, so if you do go the high school principal route, it sounds like that's what you're, you're wanting to do, then she's going to be probably taking on some of those key things that Chris was doing, state reporting. We've talked about um, doing some things with testing coordinator, um, things that, that are challenging to do, but maybe only happen one time a year. So with Ms. Reichler coming along very nicely and is gonna be a great principal soon, um, that gives her more opportunity also to do some principal roles while Kim is doing some district roles and same at the, at the other site. So it's, it's really about building it. One of the things we did do start, one of the first things I did when I started is I created an administrator training cohort to build our, to grow our own. And Ms. Meekum is in that. Uh, she's part of that. Ms. Reichler's a part of that. Nicole Latone is a part of that. Uh, coach Skirm, football coach, is in there. Um, and I believe we have one more who's interested. The idea is they're learning the Fountain Hills way. They're learning how we do things here so when a position does open, they can slide into that. So 
Um, Ms. Mika may end up being a dean someday because that would be the first step in that direction. She's already doing all our CTE work for us this year, which is something new on top of teaching multiple math levels. So we have that spirit of pitching in and everyone working together, but we need to make sure they're, uh, they're, they're in good positions, they're compensated correctly, and they feel that this is the organization they want to be in so we don't have that turnover. I can say the three uh, staff members that Mr. Hartman will be overseeing, I spoke with them individually and as a group, and they are very excited about his leadership and about working for him. And that's important because you lose Tammy, you lose Val, you lose Christy, you're back to square one. Of Those are the people that are catching some of those errors and some of those things that are not done right. And they're, they're a great team. They do good work. And we have procurement training next week for everybody in the district again. <laughs> Okay, so we'll see a new organization. Yep, April 3rd. I, yeah, I appreciate that. And I do appreciate the opportunity for people to Absolutely. move up in the district. Yeah, I think yeah. that's important. And I do agree that we need a principal at the high school as well. Okay. And I like the movement. Being able to, to move within the district is the key to keeping people. So moving up or moving sideways, whatever way it goes, it really helps. And I faith that. Mr. Hartman can take a lot of lessons if need be. <laughs> okay, future action. Um, we will have an ACT presentation uh, when that's fine, when that's put together. Uh, we're still going to talk about club policies at some point. Um, uh, ESI, um, that's going to come back to the board. I just asked that um, that last meeting we asked if there were other options besides ESI. So if you can present that to the board, uh, that would be great. And then uh, we will, the ESA vouchers are still on our radar. We just want to make sure we have all of the facts and that we are doing our due diligence. And so it's nothing that's being taken lightly. We want to ask a lot of questions. Um, and so you're still on our radar. Can, can I ask specifically what we're waiting for? Like, are we waiting to hear back from someone? Well, we're still seeking legal advice. We're checking with other districts on, on their policy. Um, I'm, che I'm checking with the county superintendent and um, and I don't think we've heard from ADE. So, so yeah. There's and then if if it is something the board wants to move forward, then it is, um, you know, is it open? Like, what happens to our own students? What's the cost? I mean, there's a lot of um, details that go in into it. So the policy will have to be written, which will also be need some time. It sounds like there maybe are some schools that have policies. Um, Renee, would you mind emailing those to we Krista? Have, we or have them. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank and, you. And she's already provided them to the board. Oh, they're in that. Perfect. So, okay. So, yeah, it's still on there. Um, dates of upcoming meetings, April 3rd, uh, we will have an executive session um, at 5 o'clock. Um, and then our regular meeting on April 17th at 6 o'clock here in the Learning Center. I'm moving Jordan. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.